So, I used to own a Fiat 500e, and I actually borrowed this one from a good friend for a very good reason today, even though I now drive a Tesla Model S, and that is to demonstrate a couple things about the charging connectors. So in these cars, the charger is actually built into the car, and the plug on the outside is actually just support equipment that communicates with the charger in the car to figure out how much power it can draw, and then to activate a contactor, essentially, to initiate the 110 or 240 volt current into the car. So, this is kind of the industry standard connector here in the United States and Canada. It is called the J1772. What you see at the top are two large L1 and L2 240 volt or 120 volt for just the L1 contacts. The middle at the bottom we have a ground and then the two little pins are actually a resistive communication method that communicates between the car's charger and the electric vehicle support equipment like my level 2 mounted charger here once you clip one of these things into the car the two little communication ports communicate with the board inside every level 2 charger and it dictates how much power can actually flow through the cord in this case with this ge unit it is a 220 volt level 2 30 amp charger. This connector is becoming very common as well because it is used on Tesla vehicles. This is unique to the Tesla, however, it adapts into J1772. So here you see the L1 and L2 220 full, uh, sorry, 220 volt pins at the top. You see the ground in the middle at the bottom, and of course the two communication leads. This connector is electrically compatible with this connector. You see here L1, L2, ground, and then the two communication pins. So you can snap this onto a J1772 and charge your Tesla with level one or level two through a standard charger. However, you can't go the other way around. So if you have something like one of these fun little Fiat 500Es, you can't plug a Tesla charger into the port, which sucks. So why does it suck exactly? I'll demonstrate a little bit just by showing you my area here. These are all public, private, and home chargers that use the J1772 charge head. There are an awful lot. So if you have a Tesla or a different EV, you can use all of these stations on your vehicle. However, this is a different map that shows just Tesla level two chargers. So you see a lot of people with their home wall connectors. You see a lot of green public uh, destination chargers. And of course there are some brown, which is restricted access. So there are definitely times, especially in rural areas where you will find Tesla level two chargers, but no J1772. The reason why you will find this sometimes is often because Tesla subsidizes their chargers for business owners. And J1772s are generally ordered by somebody like Clipper Creek and are of course paid for by either the electrical cooperative that powers them or the business owner or a conjunction of the two. So if you were to find an adapter that lets you use electrically compatible Tesla 1772 based electronics anyway with your non-Tesla EV, you would probably add 20 or 30 percent more charge options for your non-Tesla EV which is pretty significant again in rural areas. Um, I actually just got contacted by this company, Electron, a couple weeks ago, and they had mentioned that they had one of these adapters that was now in mass production. Offered uh, one to me just to test it out, and I said, absolutely. I would love to try one of these to see if it actually works. The price point on this, I believe, is $179, so significantly cheaper. And if you have a... J1772 vehicle like a Bolt or a Leaf with a big battery, you could potentially take advantage of this and pay for itself with not too much, uh, <laughs> no, sorry, not too many charges. Because um, obviously price per kilowatt hour and then you're dealing with the number of kilowatt hours you can actually put in. But generally speaking, Tesla destination chargers and mobile connectors are at least 32 amps, usually 40 or 48. And you can put an awful lot of power into your car with one of those for free. So here is what it looks like inside of the fairly damaged packaging from Amazon. I'm going to cut these little zip ties and we'll take a quick peek at it. So at the end, we see a pretty run-of-the-mill 
rubber covered J1772 with a water uh, watertight gasket in there. Nice positive click mechanism. And on this end, we see another rubber plug, which I guess is actually locked in. I'll actually have to pull that. And it's got a nice cable tether on it, which is actually pretty darn nice. Uh, the build quality looks excellent. The cable on here, especially considering the distance, this is probably good for 100 amps. Uh, maybe 80, but still, this is way overkill for cable for something this short. So it should last an awful long time and it shouldn't work hard very much. Very nice looking machined contacts. I don't know what those are made out of. They look like they might be aluminum, which isn't the best, but should work. The ground looks pretty decent, and of course the two sense pins look pretty okay too. So what I'm going to do now is actually connect with my Gen 2 mobile connector, which you're pretty likely to find with any friend with a Tesla in their garage or in the back of their vehicle. And I'm going to hook it up to the 500E and we'll see what happens. So you can see on the ground here, I've got a 32 amp Gen 2 mobile connector. I have a 500E with a J1772, and I have this fancy adapter. So what I'm gonna do first, plug that into the car. It's probably gonna give me some goal posts on the dash if it realizes what's going on. Oh. And you do actually have to flip the red tab on the bottom. Okay, so that is connected. doesn't detect it yet. So here we are at the friendly local destination charger. Let's give this one a go. Well, even at the uh, destination chargers here, no dice. Getting the goal posts on the 500, which means electrical continuity issue. So with the J1772 on the same power, we are charging away. So unfortunately, I don't think the Tesla tap thing is working because this is showing charging <laughs> hmm, that's a bummer well the solution ended up being actually just getting another one <laughs> <clears throat> so it works for level two i don't know if it would work for level one I assume it would if you plugged in just 110 to your uh, uh, mobile connector. But yeah, this should work for destination chargers and um, high power wall chargers as well. Obviously not supercharger because those are DC, but uh, you know, being able to take advantage of those additional charge points, like I said, is really pretty darn cool. So it's a neat product. It's a lot more cost effective than the Tesla tap used to be back in the day. So again, props to these guys for going the extra mile and making the connector cheaper, essentially. The J1772 is cheap, but that Tesla receiver is, is a pretty impressive little uh, custom piece. So anyway, it's a, a cool adapter. I enjoyed testing it out on this 500E and it should work for any J1772 vehicle as well. So. I'll probably <laughs> try it on the Tesla as well. Going from Tesla to J1772 back to Tesla just for just for giggles. <laughs>